end. That feels like a beginning of a TV sitcom. Hallelujah. If you're happy to be in the house of the Lord, would you say, praise the Lord? Praise but if you're happy to be in the house of the Lord, say, hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen, amen. Turn to Habakkuk chapter 2, starting in verse 2. Habakkuk chapter 2, starting in verse 2. As you go there, I just want to welcome the church this morning. Thank you for being here. I want to welcome our online audience. If you're a first-time guest here, I just want to say thank you for coming to Metro Church uh, this morning. Um, as many of you know, there are some in our church that are um, sick or in the hospital. Um, yesterday, uh, we were able to visit um, Sunil David's father, uh, Brother uh, Prabhakar, and he is in the hospital now uh, at the ER. They've moved him out of that, but he was suffering from a GI bleed, and so let's continue to pray for his healing. Um, I know he, uh, seeing um, uh, brother and sister at church every Sunday is such a joy, and they couldn't be here, and, and he said he's watching online. So we're, and later on in the service, we're going to be praying uh, for him and others in our church. Amen? Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. Church, today we'll be updating the church on Vision 2030. You've been watching it happen on the announcement. You heard it back in January, January um, uh, the last Sunday of January, and today we're going to give an update but in order to talk about that initiative, we thought it would be prudent to talk about vision. Vision, the topic of vision. Uh, in the world today, um, in the business world especially, the, the term vision is often de defined as an attractive picture of an attainable reality. An attractive picture of attainable reality. Um, why is that? Vision must be attractive or people will not care about it. Because it's so far away, people won't care about it unless it is attractive. But it also has to be attainable. If it is not attainable, people won't try. It'll feel too hard. They won't try. And I have to admit, this business definition of vision is good. An attractive picture of an attainable reality. But in, but in the Bible, in the presence of God, God takes vision way further than that. God often gives his people a vision that is so incredible, so amazing, so difficult to accomplish that we can only do it with the power of God. In fact, God's vision for God's people usually takes them towards faith. There's no way to do what God wants to do unless we have faith. We need to trust that somehow, some way. In God's due season, God will take that vision and make it into a reality. Amen? For many of you uh, sitting here today, you know what that's like. Trusting that God is going to do what he said he will do. It was, uh, it was a mystery or it was just something that you saw in a time of prayer. But now you see it with your very own eyes. In the place, in that time, we need to watch and wait and work on his timing. Waiting on God has got to be some of the most uncomfortable things. He promises you something, but you're not there yet, so you have to wait. It's very uncomfortable. One of the most uncomfortable places to ever be is in the waiting room of any hospital. If any of you have been in a waiting room, it is a difficult place to be. I have had the unfortunate instance of sitting in waiting rooms for almost every beloved member of my family, my kids, my wife, my parents, even other loved ones. I, I don't know why God has chosen me to be the one that's sitting outside watching that monitor, you know, move from color to color as they progress through uh, the operating room. And in that space, you just have to wait. You have to wait. Um, uh, it's a very hard place to be. In that place, I'm, tr I'm talking to God. I know that God is good. I know that God's promises are good, but I still have to wait, wait for the outcome. In that tension of that space of waiting, you know how our minds begin to calculate all kinds of possible outcomes. You know, fear will come in and tell us it could be this and that. You get very nervous and um, you have a great desire for your loved one to be healed and restored, but it is out of your hands, out of your control. So faith, faith when we have no control over the outcome, faith, when we have no control in the timing, that is true faith. Oftentimes, we will try to go in and control things, and that means that we don't have faith. But when you let go completely to the control and timing of God, that means faith. In fact, I would say that's real vision. 
When God says something and you realize you can't accomplish it, you don't know the timing, you just surrender to God to get it done. Amen. Many say that hindsight, when you look backwards, is crystal clear. It's 2020. You've heard that statement before. Hindsight is 2020. But hindsight and vision, they are totally opposite things. They're different things. Vision is actually foresight. It's seeing something that has not yet happened yet and believing it will happen. The potential, the possibility of something. Uh, one business leader said, uh, what looked inevitable, I mean a sure thing uh, in hindsight, was once invisible with foresight. What that means is there are things that are happening right now in our church that we are just taking for granted. Amen. We're like, oh, wow, this is amazing. This is no-brainer. It's inevitable. This was going to happen. But I want you to know 30 to 40 years before this, when they were gathering in a very small place, they were seeing with eyes of faith God's reality, and it was invisible to them. The things that we thought were in inevitable back then was invisible. And so I want to call each one of you into that space between the invisible and the inevitable. Amen. Because that is where a believer inhabits. When you walk with God, he is going to constantly be doing this. So will you be trusting God that the things that were once in invisible will now become inevitable in your life? Amen. With that, let us enter the text of Habakkuk chapter 2, starting in verse 2. It's a very familiar text, and uh, I will do my best to explain it this morning. Then the Lord replied to Habakkuk, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets, so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end, and it will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will surely come, and it will not delay. Amen. Church, I'm going to do my best to unpack this rich, complicated nature of this text to explain vision to us. I'll break it down into two concepts. Number one, you'll see it in verse two. In order to trust God's vision, the vision must be written plainly. The, the vision must be written plainly. Number two, you'll see it in verse three. The vision waits an appointed time. The vision waits an appointed time. The main idea this morning is this, in order to be a believer in between the invisible and the inevitable, we need more than sight. We need vision. We need more than just our own sight. We need God's vision. Amen? Can we open up our hearts this morning? Come on, service two. Either I'm preaching super deep or you guys are bored. I can't tell. I think it's because I'm deep. Praise God. Hopefully. Can we open up our hearts this morning, because God has vision for your life. Are you matching your life to his vision for you? It makes all the difference in life. Amen. Number one, the vision must be written plainly. It must be written plainly. As we start, God tells Habakkuk, write down what I'm telling you. This vision, write it down and make sure it is clear when you write it down. In your translations of your Bible, we all have different ones. It may say, make it plain. It might say, inscribe it clearly, or it could say, put it in big, bold letters. What does this mean? The, the phrase, inscribe what I say and put it on a tablet, or put it, inscribe it on a, on, on a piece of clay, or make what I'm saying clear to the people. We've heard all these phrases before. In fact, these, these phrases are used by God when he wants to remind his people of his covenant to them. He always says, my, this is my covenant. You need to write it down and make it plain. God cares that his people understand his law, his word, his covenant. You'll see in Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 8. Deuteronomy 27, verse 8. You'll see the same pattern. God is telling to, to Moses as a new people get ready to cross into the promised land. Make sure to write down all the words of this, of this instruction on the stones plainly and clearly. So God really cares that we understand his laws and his word. It's very important to God that it be communicated to us in a way that we understand. If you read in Proverbs, all throughout Proverbs, you'll hear, don't forget my teaching. Keep my commands in your heart. It goes further, bind them around your neck 
and write them on the tablet of your heart. Then, then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and in front of man. So it is very clear that God doesn't just want you to read it on a tablet. He wants to take his very law and write it into the tablet of our heart. Why is this important? In our life, it is important for us to understand God's word because it unlocks favor in our life. It unlocks favor in our life. The only way you're going to see God's vision come to life, uh, come, come to fruition in your life, is you need God's favor. I'm telling you, if God has a vision for you and you try to accomplish it in your own strength, you will be tired and weary. If God gives you a vision and you try to accomplish it with your own strength, you will fail. What you need is to trust in God's word, which will then unlock favor. Then favor becomes the wind in the sail to help you accomplish things that you never could do. Come on, church. You know that you're not sitting here today because of your own strength. It's not because you opened your own door. It's because God in heaven had favor. Favor and opened the door for you and your family. That's why you're here. Understanding God's word unlocks favor, and that favor begins to blow the winds of his vision coming to pass in your life. We can never bring the invisible into reality, but that is God's specialty. We can never bring the invisible into reality, but that is God's specialty specialty. The Bible is very clear that the word of God is connected to vision. Look, 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 1. It's a very short passage. It says this, during the time of Samuel, the word of the Lord was so rare in those days, therefore there was no vision. The word of the Lord was rare in those days, therefore there was no vision. What does this mean? That means that it is possible to be in a scenario where there's no word of God, and I guarantee you there will be no vision in that place. Vision will be weakened or non-existent. In fact, you may have vision from other people, but it will not be from God because the word of God is needed in order for the vision of God to be clear in our life. Young people tell me they just love to worship all the time, and I, like, I, I think that's good. I think young people should worship. Or young people like to be in fellowship all the time. I like that too. But whenever they get into trouble, they'll come up to me like, I don't know what to do in my life. I'm like, I don't know. Do you worship your way out of it? I'm like, no, I worshiped and worshiped. Nothing happened. I said, well, did you talk to all your friends? Well, I fellowshiped my way through that and nothing happened. I said, all right, what are you going to do next? They'll say, I'm going to pray. I'm like, okay, go pray. They'll pray and they'll pray and they'll pray. Then they'll come back to me and I say, well, so what happened? He's like, still got no vision for my life. What did you do? I just kept requesting and praying and praying to God. I said, where was your Bible when you were praying? Well, I mean, you told me to pray and not do Bible study. Because mm. we're not understanding what prayer means. When you come into the presence of God for your life, ask God to speak to you through his scriptures. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith doesn't come by hearing everything else in your life. Right? Faith comes by hearing the word of God. That's the only way you can have vision in your life. What happens? We walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, man, the rest of the world is walking with what they can see. But the believer doesn't walk around by what they see. Their vision is dictated in the invisible. It is dictated by faith. I walk by faith, not by sight. So sometimes our seeing problem... Our vision problem is actually a hearing problem. We're not making the scriptures plain. We're not writing it down. We're not writing it on the tablets of our heart. It's not becoming plain to us. And because it's not becoming plain, we cannot hear the word of God. Therefore, we cannot see in our life. Amen? Amen. Psalms 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word. Friends, listen to me. What that means is it, the, the, the text connotes that the place is dark. Oftentimes people tell me, how can I see? I don't know what to do. Everything's really dark in my life right now. I feel like I got cornered in a dark place. I'm, I'm trapped by some things going on in my life. I'm stuck in some issues. I'm in a dark place. Oh, I'm here to tell you that even in the most darkest place, God has vision for your life. Darkness can never shut the vision out. For your life because as you begin to read God's word God's word becomes a lamp 
and a light unto your path. The darkest place can never get you stuck because God's word will always get you out. Oh, I hope someone is listening to me right now. Oh, if you came into this place and you feel stuck and broken, his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. If you write it down, study it, make it plain, write it on the tablet of your heart, bind it around your neck. If you make God's word central into your life, you will have vision. Why is this important? The text says, write it big. Why? Because you got to give it to a herald. A herald has to run with it. So that means that the instructions for the herald, the, the word that the herald is going to say is written right there on the tablet. Now, if that was like a 40, 50 page paper, there's no way the person's going to be able to read that and run. In fact, if I gave you a very complicated vision right now, all simultaneously, I gave it to you all right now, and I say, run! Oh man, it's going to be pandemonium here. Half of you are going to run that way. Half of you will run this way. Some of you will run at me, God forbid. Some of you might run straight home. Just everyone running in all their own directions. We don't know where to run. Some of you may be asking, uh, well, are we running to something or away from something? That makes a big difference how you run. Some of you be running and you're scared. You look scared while you're running. I mean, what happened? I don't know. He said, run, I'm running. And other people look happy. Like, what are you doing? I'm running to something. I'm telling you, if we don't have vision, we cannot run together. Half of us will be running in different directions. Some will be running out of fear. Some will be running out of misplaced optimism. We're just running out of control. And chaos will come into the covenant people of God. What has to happen is we all need to read that vision together. And as heralds understand it clearly, then run together. If the church runs together, it will be an unstoppable force for good in our community. Every dark thing that we see in this metroplex, God will use the church to illuminate and bring people into salvation if we run together. Making sense, church? So, uh, okay, Proverbs 28, 19, if you don't believe that, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. We perish. We perish if we don't know what God wants to do next in our life or in the life of our church. Habakkuk was even more confused because the word he got was the Chaldeans or in Babylon, they had come over. He's, God said, I'm going to use them as an instrument and I'm going to use them against you. And that was a very difficult word for him to hear. It was really hard that he was going to use the Chaldeans to bring justice, God's justice, but they were not a covenant people. Sometimes when you hear God's vision, it won't make sense to you. In fact, it won't fit any of the paradigms currently going on in your life. You're like, why are you using a pagan group to exact your justice? Why are they the people that you are rising up? There are times when you're in the space between the invisible and the inevitable, we will be confused. We need more than sight. We need God's vision because what he's saying to us may not make sense currently. In fact, some of you have probably received prophetic words when you were young children. I have. Prophets come to your house and say something. I always look at them sideways, and here I am seeing a lot of it happen. You know, there's still more that God has said I still have not seen yet. I have to trust that somehow God is going to make that come to pass. I'm, if I try to make it come to pass in my own strength, I will fail. I need to wait on God. Listen to God. I know many of you listening to me, same thing for you. God has spoken to you and your family. You know that God has something in store for you. Will you trust God's plan for your life? Why? Uh, how are you going to be able to do that? You need more than sight. You need vision. You need God's vision. I'm telling you, when you come up against a closed door, when you come against difficulty, when you come against trial and tribulation and hardship, the first thing you throw out the window is God's vision. You're like, oh, this can't be true. I must not have heard right. But oftentimes, God takes us right through tribulation because we don't understand the ways of God. God's ways are higher than our ways. His wisdom, his understanding, his thoughts are way higher than ours. So even if God calls you to do something that feels very difficult, trust God and walk with him. Amen? Will you be trusting God's vision? Will you make it plain 
in your life. Uh, one of the things that I like to do is if I hear some, God say something, I literally will write it down. I mean, now I type it in. I make it plain. I literally have things that God has said to me since I was like 18 years old all the way into my 60s and 70s with this little check mark next to it. And as God does it, I'm like, check, check. Do you have vision for your life? God wants to show you what he wants to do with your life. Amen? Number two, very quickly, the vision is for an appointed time. Uh, Habakkuk uh, receives the vision and God tells him to write it down. When? Right now. Right now, write it down. But what you are writing won't happen for a long time. It would only happen in God's due season, due time. It's interesting, only God can ask for history to be written down before it happens. Go find a stone tablet that you can't erase or change. Write it down. Let everyone see history before it even happens. Amen. You know that God has history already written for you. And nobody can change it. Only God can write down history before it happens. When God makes a promise to us, it's already marked in history. That's how, see, this is where we need to understand the sovereignty of God. If God has a, if he has a good plan and purpose for your life, who can stop God's plan for your life? Hallelujah. Write it down. Hallelujah. Show it to everybody so when it happens, only one person gets the glory for it. Tell everybody, this is what God says is going to happen. I'm not going to even be able to change this later. I can't even edit it to write it down. Why? Because God is going to make every single one of those letters come to pass. Because to God, it's history, even though we have never seen it yet. For us, news is something that's already happened. You guys know? News is stuff that's already happened. Vision is what not, is not happened. News already happened. Vision has not happened. But you know what? We're really good at spreading news. I never hear anyone spreading vision. You're like, oh my goodness, did you hear what God is going to do? I never hear that. I would love to be a part of a community where our rumors are all dictated by God's vision. It's always dictated by the latest news. Why? Because news has happened. You know, we can see it written down. Somebody wrote it down in the papers and social media, so we put faith in it. God's like, I've already written everything down too. But you don't trust it because it hasn't happened yet. But I would rather us be a people of God who's like less looking at the news because it's written down by man. Start looking at vision. Something is written by God. Because God is going to make this happen. Again, for some of us, we may think vision is slow. It's going to take a long time. But we have to understand God's timetable is different than our timetable. What God has planned. He is never late. We feel like we, he is delayed. We feel like those things. We think that it is slow. But it's not. It's all happening according to God's plan for our life. All of our worrying and rushing is not going to help. So here's the difficulty as I get ready to close. You have to wait and be prepared simultaneously. You have to wait and be prepared simultaneously. That is a very difficult thing. You ask any little kid, for example, you tell your children, we're going to go to Disney World. When? Next week. They'll start packing now. Start preparing now. And what? We're not going for another seven days. They have to wait, but they're getting prepared. Preparing and waiting at the same time is hard. You want to just do it. After you're done preparing, you want to go. Right? But God is saying, people of God, listen, between the invisible and the inevitable, you, in that space in between, prepare every day, watch and wait every single day for the move of God. Because if we try to rush, this whole thing will be done in calamity. It will all fall apart. But also, if we're too afraid, if we're full of fear or apathy, we'll get behind God. God is saying faith means that you are moving in step with God. Whatever the cadence and the beat of heaven is, we move with that. We don't rush in front of God out of our own ambition, and we don't slow down because of our own fear. We stay with God because it is happening at an, away, at a, an appointed season. This word is kairos, and you've already heard me talk about it many times. It is God's timing for a moment in a season in our life. So church, we need more than sight. We need vision. 
church. I think it was uh, Helen Keller that said, what is worse than being, a bl being blind is a person that has sight but no vision. Church, I often worry about our Indian diaspora churches, our South Asian churches, because when there's no vision, we will perish. But I want us to be a church who trusts that God is going to be doing a new thing. We're not always looking back at what happened with Upperton and Ramaji, but we're looking forward, looking at kids that we haven't met yet, great-grandchildren we don't know yet, the greatest, greater evangelists, prophets, apostles than we have ever seen. It's about to come in the, in, the, in the lineage after us. Are we setting up things, putting the house in order to see a revival that's going to surpass any one of our imaginations? Oh, I'm talking about a revival that we're going we're gonna to hear about. People are going to be writing about. They're going to be writing about it. And we're going to be like, I lived during that entire paragraph that they're writing down. Because God has already written it down in a book. It's already history for God. One day we're going to be reading history books. We're going to be reading paragraphs say the great awakening that hit the DFW Metroplex. The great awakening that awoken the South Asian diaspora all over. I've never seen so many people from non-Christian backgrounds come to faith. We're going to read that and we're going to say, I lived in those days because I walked in cadence with God, with the God of heaven. I walked in an appointed season so church would you just close your eyes and take a moment as you think about your own life <clears throat> just take this holy moment right now every eyes closed every head bowed start evaluating your own life if you feel like you don't know what to do next could you just start asking say God speak to me speak to me from your word I feel the spirit of the living God working in this place. Oh, young people, uncles, aunties, brothers, sisters, listen to me. Let, let, let yourself surrender into the presence of God. Say, Father, what vision do you have for my life? What vision do you have for my life? Make it clear, Lord. Help me not to recklessly pursue my own ambitions, God. Help me not to be filled with apathy or fear, God. But help me to walk with you, Jesus. What is that you have for us, God? Oh, God, I pray that you'd open our spiritual eyes this morning. Oh, I speak against the blindness in the name of Jesus. Make your people come together around your vision, God. What you have planned, Father. Lord, I pray for young people who have heard words about their life, Lord Jesus. And they haven't seen it yet, God. I pray that you give them a posture to wait and prepare. Watch and wait. Prepare. Trust that God's promises never fail for you. It will never fail. God is not a man. He will never lie. God is not a man. He will not lie. His pr promises are never deceitful. They're always yes and amen. They are always true. So will you receive God's promises and vision for your life? God, I pray against any fear or an anxiety, God. Maybe, maybe, maybe my friends see the vision, but they're, they're, they're afraid. They're afraid to take that step, God. I pray that your perfect love will cast out all fear in the name of Jesus. That anxiety and weariness will just walk, will be washed away in your presence. Lord, give us more than just simple physical sight. Give us spiritual vision. Give us spiritual vision. Give us spiritual vision. Would some of you just begin to pray right now? God, give me spiritual vision. Show me, God. Show me. Show me, God, what to do with my life. Show me how I'm supposed to lead my family, God. Show me how I'm supposed to raise my kids, God. Show me how I'm supposed to work in my workplace, God. Lord, I don't have to trust in the promises of supervisors or managers or vice presidents. I trust in the word of the living God, Lord Jesus. Oh, help us to trust your word and your promise, your vision for us, God. Please, please. Make it plain, make it clear, God. And give us the boldness, the patience to wait for that opportune season. We thank you, we praise you, Lord. We love you. Help us to worship you now. Help us to worship you now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Church, would you stand to your feet? We're going to move into a time of worship. Uh -huh.